All right. So today we're gonna uh, we're gonna deep dive into okay the U.S. military's response to China's you know increasing uh, aggressive moves. Yeah. Um, you've sent over some really interesting analysis. Uh, you know, intel on a mm-hmm. a secret U.S. Army training exercise. Right. And some pretty strong statements from uh, from top military officials. Yeah. No. This is this is a good one. This is way more than saber rattling. We're talking about a potential shift in the global power balance. It's fascinating how the U.S. military is adapting to this new reality, yeah. right? I mean, we're seeing a shift away from yeah. those counterinsurgency operations that have dominated U.S. military strategy for the past two decades. Right. You know, Afghanistan, Iraq. Yeah. Towards a focus on large-scale conventional warfare, the yeah. kind that would be necessary in a conflict with a major power like China. Yeah. And the source material mentions a secret U.S. Army training exercise in Hawaii that was specifically designed to simulate a conflict with China. Right. Not exactly your everyday war games, is it? Right. This this is a significant escalation. Yeah. I mean, the U.S. Army hasn't been involved in a large scale conflict since the Gulf War. Mm-hmm. Deploying ground forces to a potential conflict in the Pacific would be a major strategic shift. Yeah. And this isn't just about flexing muscles, is it? No. I mean, this training exercise is happening now for a reason. The timing, the timing is crucial, right? This this suggests that the U.S. military is working with intelligence assessments that suggest a potential conflict with China could be on the horizon and they're preparing for that possibility. OK, so the U.S. is sending a clear message with this training exercise. Yeah. What about China? How are they reacting to all of this? Well, publicly, Chinese media have tried to downplay the significance of the exercise, Mm -hmm. dismissing it as a ploy for more military funding. But but the analysis we're looking at suggests that this reaction masks deeper anxieties within China. So they're putting on a brave face, but secretly freaking out. In a way, yes. Okay. China's economy is heavily reliant on foreign investment, and the prospect of a conflict with the U.S. could send investors running for the hills. Right. It could also undermine China's ambitions to become a global leader. So it's not just about military strength. Mm-hmm. It's about economic and geopolitical power as well. Absolutely. And and this is where Admiral John Aquilino's statements come into play. Oh, yeah. Aquilino, the commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. Mm-hmm. He didn't exactly mince words, did he? Straight up called out China's military expansion and aggressive actions in the Taiwan Strait and South China Sea. Right. Didn't he even use the term flashpoint? He did. He did. A flashpoint is an area or situation that has a high potential for erupting into conflict. Yeah. Aquilino was very deliberate in his choice of words. Okay. He was sending a clear message about the U.S.'s commitment to defending its interests in the region, but he also avoided any rhetoric that could be seen as needlessly provocative. It's like a high-stakes game of poker, right? Each side is trying to read the other's hand and make the right moves without escalating the situation. That's a great analogy. Yeah. And and what's interesting is how Aquilino's statements perfectly complement the secret training exercise. Mm. Mm-hmm. It suggests a coordinated messaging strategy from the U.S. military. Right. They're using both actions and words to deter China's aggression. Okay, so the U.S. is sending a clear message. They're prepared to defend their interests in the region. And they're not afraid to call out China's aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. But what about the bigger picture? How does this all fit into the broader context of U.S.-China relations? Well, the analysis we're looking at makes a fascinating point about the different ways democracies and authoritarian systems handle complex situations. Mm -hmm. They use the concept of sample size to illustrate this. Sample size. That's an interesting way to think about it. How does that apply to the U.S. and China? Think of it this way. Democracies are messy. Mm -hmm. They're full of debate and dissent, and they often make mistakes. Yeah. But they also have a built-in mechanism for self-correction. Okay. They learn from their mistakes, adapt, and improve over time. So it's like a basketball team that's constantly analyzing its performance. Right. Identifying its weaknesses. And making adjustments to its strategy. Exactly. Authoritarian systems, on the other hand, tend to double down on their mistakes. Right. They suppress dissent, punish failure, and stifle innovation. Because nobody wants to tell the emperor he has no clothes. Exactly. Especially in a system where speaking truth to power can have serious consequences. And that can be incredibly dangerous, especially when you're dealing with something as complex and unpredictable as international relations. Okay, so the analysis is arguing that the U.S.'s democratic system, despite its flaws, gives it an advantage in the long run. That's right. The U.S. military is constantly learning and adapting. Mm -hmm. As, As we've seen with their analysis of the conflicts in Ukraine and Israel. Right. 
They're using these conflicts as real world case studies to develop new tactics and technologies that could be relevant in a potential conflict with China. So it's not just about having a bigger army or more advanced weapons. Right. It's about having a system that allows you to learn, adapt, and outmaneuver your opponent. Precisely. And, hmm. and this is where the concept of multi-domain warfare comes in. Multi-domain warfare. What's that? It's a recognition that modern warfare is no longer confined to the traditional battlefield. Okay. It encompasses cyberspace, outer space, the information domain, and the economic realm. So it's about fighting on multiple fronts simultaneously. Yeah. Using all the tools at your disposal to achieve your objectives. Exactly. And, and the U.S. military is preparing for a multi-domain conflict with China. This is getting intense. I'm yeah. starting to understand the scale and complexity of this situation. Mm. So the U.S. is preparing for a multi-domain conflict with China, and they're drawing on lessons learned from other conflicts to develop new tactics and technologies. Mm -hmm. What about China's allies? Are they also getting involved? Yes. The U.S. isn't alone in this. Australia, for example, has recently decided to significantly increase its missile production. Okay. In response to the growing threat from China, mm. this indicates that America's allies are also taking concrete steps to prepare for a potential conflict. So the U.S. is building a network of allies to counter China's growing influence. And the analysis we're looking at argues that the U.S. military's approach isn't just about defense. Mm -hmm. They're also actively preparing for a decisive counterstrike if necessary. So it's a two-pronged strategy. Right. Deter China through a strong defense. Right. But also be prepared to deliver a devastating blow if deterrence fails. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a porcupine, right? Prickly on the outside, but also capable of inflicting serious damage if provoked. That's a good way to put it. And here's where things get really interesting. The analysis argues that China's aggressive actions, okay. particularly toward Taiwan, are actually self-defeating. Self-defeating? How so? Instead of projecting strength, these actions are actually strengthening the resolve of the U.S. and its allies to oppose China's ambitions. So China is digging themselves into a hole with every aggressive move they make. Their actions are having the opposite of their intended effect. Exactly. That is fascinating. It's like they're accidentally uniting the opposition against them. It's a classic case of unintended consequences. This is all so insightful. I feel like I have a much better understanding of the situation now. Good. But I can't help but wonder what happens next. Where do we go from here? It really does seem like they've stumbled into a trap of their own making. A self-inflicted trap. That's a powerful image and kind of scary when you think about it. Think about it. The more aggressive China becomes, the more the U.S. and its allies are forced to respond. Right. It's a vicious cycle that could easily spiral out of control even if neither side truly wants a war. It's like a runaway train hurtling towards a collision that nobody wants. Mm. So what does all of this mean for the average person? Most of us aren't military strategists or geopolitical experts. Right. How does this global power struggle affect our everyday lives? Well, it means that we're living in a time of profound change and uncertainty. Yeah. The world order that we've grown accustomed to is shifting. Right. And the relationship between the U.S. and China is at the very heart of this transformation. Mm -hmm. The decisions made in Washington and Beijing will have ripple effects across the globe, impacting everything from our economy to our personal freedoms. So it's not just some abstract geopolitical drama playing out on the world stage. Uh, well, it's something that we should all be paying attention to because it has very real consequences for all of us. Exactly. The economic, technological, and even ideological competition between the U.S. and China will shape the world we live in for decades to come. Wow. It's not just about who has the biggest military or the most advanced technology. Right. It's also about values, ideas, and ways of life. Wow, that puts things in perspective. Right. It's not just about tanks and missiles. Right. It's about the future of our world. So where do we even begin to make sense of all this? Well, I think the first step is to stay informed and engaged. Okay. We need to go beyond just passively consuming the news. Right. We need to critically analyze it, ask questions and challenge assumptions, mm -hmm. seek out diverse perspectives, and try to understand the complexities of the issues at play. It's a call to action, isn't it? Yeah. We can't just sit back and watch this unfold. That's right. We need to be informed citizens, engage in thoughtful dialogue, and demand responsible leadership from those in power. Absolutely. And remember, the future isn't predetermined. Mm -hmm. We have the power to shape it, but only if we understand the forces at play. I love that the future isn't predetermined. Mm -hmm. It's a reminder 
that we all have a role to play in shaping the world we want to live in. And that's why these kinds of deep dives are so important. Right. By unpacking the complexities and empowering ourselves with knowledge and understanding, mm. we can become more active and informed participants in shaping our collective future because, as we all know, knowledge is power. So true. The more we understand about these complex issues, the better equipped we are to make informed decisions and contribute to a more peaceful and prosperous world. Absolutely. And remember, this is just a snapshot of a constantly evolving situation. Right. The U.S. military's preparations and China's response are part of a complex dance with global implications. It's a dance that could lead to conflict or it could lead to a new era of cooperation and understanding. Okay. So we need to stay informed, engage in thoughtful dialogue, and demand responsible leadership. Right. But what specifically should we be paying attention to as this situation develops? What are the key indicators that things are heating up or cooling down? Well, keep a close eye on the U.S. military's actions and statements. Okay. They're sending a clear message. Mm -hmm. And their actions often speak louder than words, for example. Are they increasing their military presence in the region? Right. Are they conducting more joint exercises with allies? Mm -hmm. Those are all signs that they're taking the threat from China seriously. And what about China? What should we be looking for in their behavior? Watch how China responds to the U.S.'s actions. Okay. Will they continue down the path of aggression or will they look for ways to de-escalate the situation? Right. For example, are they continuing to build up their military presence in the South China Sea? Yeah. Are they making more assertive claims over Taiwan? Those are all signs that they're not backing down. It's like a game of chess, isn't it? I mean, Each side is making strategic moves and counter moves. Exactly. Trying to anticipate the other's next step. And then there's the wild card of technology, right? Mm -hmm. We've talked about cyber warfare and information warfare. Yeah. But what about the impact of emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and hypersonic weapons? Right. How will those technologies change the game? Those are crucial questions, and they highlight the rapidly changing nature of warfare. Yeah. Technology is evolving at an unprecedented pace, and the military balance of power could shift dramatically in the coming years. Mm -hmm. Both the U.S. and China are investing heavily in developing cutting-edge technologies that could give them a decisive advantage. It's almost like we're on the verge of a new era of warfare, one where the lines between conventional and unconventional conflict are blurred and the battleground extends far beyond the traditional battlefield. Right. It's both exciting and terrifying at the same time. Exactly. And the stakes couldn't be higher. The outcome of this competition will have profound implications for the future of our world. It's a reminder that we can't afford to be complacent. Right. We need to stay informed, engage in thoughtful dialogue, and demand responsible leadership from those in power. This deep dive has been a real eye-opener. It's given me a whole new perspective on the challenges we face and the choices we must make as a global community. It's been my pleasure to share these insights with you. And remember, the future is not predetermined. Right. We have the power to shape it, but we must first understand the forces at play. Mm -hmm. Keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep engaging with these critical issues. The fate of our world may depend on it. Wow. That's a powerful message. I feel inspired to learn more and get involved. But before we wrap up, I have one final question. If history teaches us anything, it's that the path to peace is often paved with difficult choices and hard-won lessons. As the U.S. and China navigate this complex and potentially perilous relationships, what can we as individuals do to promote peace and understanding? What are some practical steps we can take to make a difference? That's a great question, and honestly, there's no easy answer. The situation is so complex and multifaceted, but I think one of the most important things we can do is to promote dialogue and understanding. Yeah. You know, it's it's easy to fall into the trap of us versus them thinking, especially when tensions are high. Right. But it's crucial to remember that we're all interconnected and that cooperation is essential if we want to avoid conflict. That makes sense. But how can we as individuals really make a difference on a global scale? Well, for starters, we can educate ourselves about the issues. Read books, articles, and listen to podcasts like this one. The more informed we are, the better equipped we'll be to have constructive conversations about these complex topics. Right. It's like that old saying, knowledge is power. Exactly. And we can use that knowledge to challenge stereotypes and misconceptions. Mm -hmm. We can also support organizations that are working to promote peace and understanding between the U.S. and China. Mm -hmm. There are many NGOs and think tanks that are doing great work in this area. So get informed, challenge stereotypes, and support peace-building organizations. That sounds like a good starting point. It is. And remember, every little bit helps. 
Even small actions can have a ripple effect. If enough people commit to promoting dialogue and understanding, we can create a more peaceful and prosperous future for everyone. This deep dive has been incredibly insightful. I feel like I have a much better grasp of the situation now, and more importantly, I feel empowered to do something about it. Thank you for guiding us through this complex and fascinating topic. It's been my pleasure. Remember, the future is not predetermined. We have the power to shape it, but we must first understand the forces at play. Keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep engaging with these critical issues. The fate of our world may depend on it. And on that note, we'll leave you with this thought. The relationship between the U.S. and China is one of the most important and complex in the world. It's a relationship that will shape the 21st century and beyond. So let's all do our part to ensure that it's a relationship built on peace, cooperation, and mutual respect. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, stay curious.